This just in a CNN exclusive, Paul Whelan, uh, who the State Department says has been wrongfully detained in Russia since 2018, is speaking out from prison in a new phone call today with CNN. He just spoke with our very own Jennifer Hansler, and she joins us now uh, from Washington. Uh, Jennifer, how is Paul doing? Uh, what can you tell us about this conversation uh, that you had with him exclusively uh, to us here at CNN? Well, Jim, Paul tells me he feels positive and confident that the wheels are turning to secure his release. The last time I spoke with him was back in December, right after Brittany Griner had been freed in a prisoner swap, and he felt very disappointed that he had been left behind. It was actually the second time that he had been left behind in a prisoner swap between the Russian U at Russians and the U.S. Uh, Trevor Reed was also brought home in a prisoner swap last year, and he had urged the Biden administration to make him a priority. When I spoke to him today, he seemed much more uplifted and confident that he had been made a priority, that the Biden administration was working to get him home, but he wished that that would happen more quickly, and he was still a bit concerned that he could be left behind again, particularly now that Russia has arrested another American, Wall Street Journal reporter Evan Gershkovich. I want you to take a listen to what he told me about this. I feel that my life shouldn't be considered less valuable or important than others who have been uh, previously traded. And I think there are people in D.C. that feel the same way, and they're moving towards um, a compromise and resolution to this as quickly as they can. There will be an end to this, and, that, and I hope is coming sooner than later. But uh, it is depressing on a daily basis, you know, going through this. And as you heard right there, Jim, he's also just having a hard time spending his day-to-day -day in this Russian prison colony out in a remote part of Russia called Mordovia after having been detained there for more than four years in Russia. And Jennifer, I understand he was, uh, he was aware of some outside reports about his case. Um, what has he been able to see uh, from his Russian prison? I, I, does he... Uh, have any hope that because of the coverage that, uh, you know, the dam is starting to break? What are some of his thoughts on that? Well, Jim, it was very interesting because he said he was actually able to watch from his prison with fellow prisoners his sister's speech before a U.N. Security Council meeting that was chaired by the Russian Foreign Minister Sergei Lavrov in New York last month. In that speech, Elizabeth Whelan called on the Russians to release her brother immediately. Uh, he was also able to watch parts of President Biden's speech, the White House Correspondents' Dinner, in which the U.S. president called for the release of Americans who are wrongfully detained around the world, including Paul. Uh, Whelan told me he thinks this might be because the Russians are using this as propaganda to show that the Americans are, quote, begging for one of their own. But for Paul, this really helped lift his spirits to see that there are public messages here in the U.S. that make him seem like a priority and make him uh, show that he is, is really, they're working to get him home. Take a listen. The public displays and um, events such as, the, you know, the press corps dinner and, and the U.N. Um, visit um, demonstrate to not just me, you know, privately, but to the world that our leaders are um, impacted by this, and they do want me back, and they are working to try to get me home. I mean, if, if you consider all of the people and all of the agencies in, in my four countries that are working on this, it's incredible, and I think they're going to get it done. And I should also note, Jim, that Secretary of State Antony Blinken has said that the U.S. has actually given a proposal to the Russians to secure Paul Whelan's freedom, and the Russians have not yet engaged on that proposal. Jim? All right, Jennifer Hansler, great work there. Thank you so much. Uh, we appreciate it. Uh, let's talk about this a little bit more now with CNN contributor Jill Doherty. Uh, she's also CNN's former Moscow bureau chief. Uh, Jill, uh, again, great work by our Jennifer Hansler there over at the State Department. Uh, let's talk about this. Paul Whelan says he is optimistic, in part because of these public displays of support for him. I, I saw the president uh, uh, talking about this at the White House Correspondents Center not too long ago. I mean, do you agree that his case remaining visible is essentially uh, part of the reason why we're seeing this pressure uh, being brought about for his release, uh, as Paul seems to see it himself. Um, what are your thoughts? Yeah, that's a little hard to judge. Uh, the Russians don't like it when this is discussed in public. So um, having the president come out at the dinner and then also that U.N. appearance by his sister, I think it's significant that they actually showed it in prison, even if they're trying to say, well, the Americans are begging. But that is a very interesting moment. And I think, you know, 
Paul is in prison, so his information is very limited, but I think a lot of people's information right now is limited because the real work has to be done behind the scenes. And that serious proposal uh, that Anthony Blinken is talking about, uh, we don't know ex exactly what that could be. It obviously could be a trade, but one of the problems here is that number one, uh, you know, uh, Paul Whelan has been accused and actually found guilty in the Russian system, uh, which he denies, uh, for espionage. That is a very serious charge, the most serious you can get. And so who would they trade him for? I mean, there aren't a lot of people being held in the United States. There are other people that the Russians want that are in other countries. So that would make it even more you know, difficult to do a deal where you would try to convince other countries to uh, let the, the person go, the Russian go, and go back to Russia. So it's, it's very complicated. It's been very complicated. And, and when the Russians detained American journalist uh, Evan Gershkovich back in March, uh, Jill, tell me, that, can, did the Kremlin send a message that it's in no hurry to re release Americans? What did they say? You know, they didn't, but the um, d uh, diplomats that I was talking to said they, from what they could see, the Russians were going to try to drag it out as long as they can. And it appears to be that way. I mean, just recently, uh, he was not allowed any access by members uh, or representatives from the U.S. Embassy. And the case is moving, but it's moving very, very slowly. And that's to the Russians' advantage. You know, they're, they're in no uh, hurry to free Evan Gershkovich. They want to get as much out of this as they can. And it also makes the situation, let's face it, politically for Biden difficult. And that's another thing that President Putin obviously uh, would probably like. So the um, it is being dragged out, there's no question. And there's really no guarantee in any case with Gershkovich or with Paul Whelan of how this ultimately will end. Because as you know, the war in Ukraine and the situation between the United States and Russia every day is changing and in most cases getting worse.